Good evening, everybody, uh, and welcome to What's in Your WordPress Toolbox. We're going to be, uh, we are WordPress Tampa Bay. Uh, I am Jim Trude, I'm the one from WordPress Tampa Bay. And uh, below me, we have Travis Lopes, Jennifer Novak, and Elaine Siddlins. They are also organizers for WordPress Tampa Bay. Tonight, we're doing the Building a Community Crafted 2024 WordPress Essentials Toolkit. Our, oh, Jen, you're making some funny noises at the end all of a sudden. All right, WordPress Tampa Bay. We meet monthly on the third Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. We are online for our Ask Us Anythings and we are discussing doing in-person quarterly socials. Uh, our meetup website is uh, meetup.com slash WP Tampa Bay. Our website is wptampabay.org. And on that website, you will find links to our Slack chat, our Facebook group, and our meetups. Uh, we are a member of the WordPress Tampa Bay Network. What that basically means is that we have combined all of our WordPress meetups across Tampa Bay, which were Tampa, St. Petersburg, Brandon, El Rico, Newport Ritchie, and Lakeland, and combined them into the one WordPress Tampa Bay meetup. And that has a full calendar for pretty much any of those groups or any of those areas. If you want to have to get together to do like a coffee social or discuss things or stuff like that, just pop in and, uh, you know, ask us and we will put you on the calendar. Okay. All right. Our upcoming meetups and events we have in March 19th, we're going to be doing an Ask Us Anything crowdsourcing WordPress support workshop live stream. And then the following month, in April 16th, we'll be doing either an Ask Us Anything or a block editor deep dive, where we're going to go back and visit the block editor and the full screen editor and stuff like that and talk about uh, kind of do an overview, deep dive, that kind of thing, kind of determine its uh, pros, cons, and, and try to discuss why people might want to start looking at it more heavily, especially since it's becoming more, how many years now have they been doing it, Travis? I can't remember. 2017, 2018, maybe? That sounds right. Yeah, that's what I think too. So, oh, wow, it's getting pretty, you know, stable. Anyway, tonight, uh, if you do want to join the call, we're using StreamYard and we posted an invite link onto our Facebook and our YouTube chat. Uh, when you join the call, it will give you guest instructions, uh, which will show you how to set up your microphone and your camera correctly and stuff like that. So, um, First thing you need to make sure you do is you do have your mic and your microphone and your speakers properly tested and configured. And if you're also watching the stream on YouTube or on Facebook Live, you need to make sure you mute that tab because if you do jot down into the call tonight and we bring you in to ask you questions and discuss things with you, um, you will be, if you're listening to the show on another tab, you're going to create like a huge echo when your microphone starts because it will pick up the other uh, the, the audio from your cab. Okay, so let's get started with doing the show. Add that to the stage and I'm going to remove this stop screen. Okay. All right, so tonight we're going to be talking about what's in your WordPress toolbox. Uh, we do have two folks on the call tonight that have joined in, uh, Wayne Smith and Kenneth. Um, Elaine, you want to start getting them chatting with them and see if they have anything specific they want to present. If, uh, like if I know, Ken, you uh, I'll just bring in, Ken, <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, you had presented a couple of ideas. So when we get to that section, I'll, I'll bring you in. OK, so sound good? Sound good. I see your thumb go up. <laughs> OK, so what's in your WordPress toolbox? So tonight, I kind of broke all of the suggestions. We put out a uh, poll on Facebook. And we put out a questionnaire on our meetup group. So when folks RSVP'd and also when they were, um, when they filled out the poll on our Facebook group, we got ideas for a lot of different plugins and themes and pieces that they put in their toolkit when they're building a brand new WordPress website or if they're migrating one and stuff like that. So that's kind of where we collected all of these little plugins and stuff. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So our first uh, category we came up with was migration development. And uh, in that category, uh, the two things that popped up was WP Migrate, which is a uh, migration tool created by WP Engine and um, local by Flywheel. And the reason those two kind of like stack together pretty well is 
uh, WP Migrate allows you to take an existing site and grab its media, its posts, its database, everything else, dump it into a file, and then immediately drop it into local by flywheel and fire it up. And uh, it makes for a really clean and simple way to migrate an existing site into an development site so that you can work on it prior to uh, converting it. And WP Migrate can go even further than that. You can link two sites together. You can uh, have it automatically pull uh, the database, the plugin files, the media files, the theme files to uh, find and replace. When that happening, you can save that as a template so you can easily go back and do that again. You can even go deeper with the settings of like, hey, I'm going to set up my production site with WP Migrate, but I'm going to make sure like no sites can push to production. So that way my site can never be overwritten. I uh, using WP Migrate and all that fun stuff. You're talking about WP Migrate Pro though at that point, aren't you? Yes. They just yeah. call it now, they just call it straight WP Migrate. Yeah, because I used the WP Migrate Pro for a multi-site migration and it did not work the well the way it should have. So let me just put it that way. I had some issues. There, um, yeah, they have it, their multi-site tools are reserved for their highest paid tier. Yeah, but I purchased that highest tier and ended up having to refund the whole thing because it just didn't work the way it was supposed to. And granted, it could have been, um, it could have been, I just muted you, Jen, because you're making some funny boy buzzing noises again. But I, I'll I might meet you in a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, the, um, <clears throat> it had some issues with copying the media. There was like, it wouldn't go back and grab all the media. It only grabbed like a couple of years. It was very strange. So I just ended up doing the whole thing manually, which was fine. I was used to that anyway. So those are the two that I figured were like, they don't really fit inside the WordPress space. They do because one is a WordPress plugin, but local by flywheel is not. So obviously, so. And our next configuration group, uh, we were talking about, we're kind of going from like the migration to uh, kind of like stepping through kind of like design and content management. So the next group we came up with was the block editor type plugins. And the whole idea was, is that if you pull a site in and you want to convert it to using the block editor, uh, there's two plugins that you probably want to use because um, you might have short codes and all manner of crappy stuff actually inside the old classic editor Thing. So having the classic editor and the classic widgets plugins installed allows you to flip back and forth between the new block editor widgets and the new block editor, but also be able to switch back to the classic editor if you need to. Very helpful for sites that are coming over from like Divi or shortcode heavy sites, um, or you even some widgets where you have no idea what the configuration settings were and you can't get to them anymore because they're not supported. They didn't update their code for those widgets for the block editor. So you need to be able to get to them from the classic widgets. Uh, that was one of those things. There's also like a couple of plugins called the classic editor plus, which completely disables the block editor and shuts down you know, block editor widgets and everything else like that. And I didn't promote any of those because I don't think that's the appropriate way to deal with that. Uh, it's not, you know, that stuff is not going away. The block editor is not going to be going away. At some point in time, everyone's going to have to get used to it. Uh, I put it down here, help. generate. Yeah, go ahead. It Perhaps, is helpful, though, for some custom post types you might want to disable mm -hmm. the block editor on just because it's, they're not meant to be block editor. Exactly. Types of content. exactly. No. Right. Yeah. And until the block editor supports custom fields and stuff like that, I'm more a holistic way or organic way, I don't use the block editor for most of my custom post types at all. So, And it's a little um, frustrating how that is programmatically controlled of like, if uh -huh. you want to disable the block editor for post type, you have to dis disable it from the REST API. It's yeah. like, no, I might want to have the post type in the REST API. Yeah. But still make block <laughs> exactly. editor. It's, yeah, it's not great. Yeah. Not a very fan of that at all. Uh, the other one I put down here was generate press and generate blocks. That was, uh, no one had actually mentioned any block based themes. Uh, and generate press is a block supported theme that has facets that are also still, like you can still control the menu and stuff like that. And generate press and the header. 
but uh, I mentioned it because it was one of those that supports the block editor completely, uh, but is also has bells and whistles that are on top of it. They have like a handful of very specific blocks that were created to kind of bridge the gap until Gutenberg got where it needed to be. But Gutenberg has almost gotten there, but there's still some areas that's not. Uh, Travis does not like generate blocks because it's it's has too much stuff dealing with it. But I honestly think their global styles is doing a much better job of managing styles globally until generate until uh, Gutenberg supports it properly. The uh, what is it called? The static uh, syncing. It's like you have static. Oh, the, the synced patterns? Yeah, synced patterns. Yes, that's, that's coming it. in WordPress 6.5. So Right. So very yeah. soon. Very soon. Supposedly. It's it, it's in beta testing right now. So very soon. Okay. Okay. Cool. And uh one of my coworkers at Gravity Farm suggested block visibility because it allows you to turn off and on blocks. Uh, with conditional logic and stuff like that, which is quite with a useful feature. wide range of conditional logic from like the current user's location, if they're logged in mm -hmm. and their user role, like the date and time. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. So I'm gonna bring in wow, uh, that's cool. Kenneth on this one because now we're talking about builders, and these are basically uh, all of those wonderful uh, WordPress builder plugins that end themes and stuff like that that completely say Bleh! to the block editor but our builders so hey kenneth welcome hey hey guys how are you doing can you hear me okay good yeah we can hear you great perfect actually perfect, perfect. Yeah. well i think i've played See. with almost everything on this list at one point or another <laughs> yeah i kind of figured you probably had because we've talked, we've seen you inside facebook or one of those other things too now you suggested yeah. cadence wp that's your favorite one right yeah, there's only two that I use now for clients. Um, I had, you know, gone from several of these and slowly migrated all my clients into Elementor a few years ago. And I was never totally happy with Elementor because it doesn't, it's got a fair amount of code bloat in it that makes the sites run slower. And then Cadence mm -hmm. WP came along and I started doing literally a one-off experiment where I built two identical sites, one with Elementor and one with Cadence WP. And Cadence WP was a whole lot faster. And so now I've, as I rebuild client sites, I, I migrate them over to Cadence WP. The client doesn't really care. This is really more about, you know, providing a better product to my, you know, customer at the end of the day. Cool. Do you, are there any other uh, utility plugins that you use that you put on every single site you use? Oh my gosh, I have a long list. <laughs> <laughs> A long list. I would say. Feel, fr uh, feel free to type them in the comment box, and we will uh, drop them on the thing as, as well. We ended up like after creating the whole list, we were at fifty exactly. So uh, okay. I figured fifty was more than enough to, to discuss. Now we okay. had. Um, let me see who was the person that did Oxygen Builder. I don't think they're. Oh, uh, that would have been Evan Thacker. Evan Thacker had come in from our. Sorry to like over obliterate you for a minute there. Uh, Kenneth, but Evan had came in from our RSVP and he uses Oxygen Builder. Now, Graph API, I couldn't find a plugin that actually did Graph API. I know what Graph API is, but uh, he was like Oxygen Builder, Divi, Advanced Custom Fields, and Yoast. Um, I don't use Divi because it's still, it's just to me, it's bloated. Yes. Uh, just way too bloated. I could, when I used to use it, it would actually take my machine down. Like it would, mm -hmm. it would, it would take up so much memory that it would take my machine down. And I don't use Elementor because they don't embrace the block editor at all. Right. And I really, now does Cadence use the block editor at all? Yes. Or support it? Okay, good. They, 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 do, they do to support it to some degree. If you actually just look at the underlying code that comes out of any block you get out of Elementor or basic coding or cadence wp cadence wp is to me is much closer uh okay, to cool. to true code Got and it. i come from, i come from old school of you know very early ibm mainframes where you know i coded by hand for fortran was the <laughs> latest and greatest <laughs> and uh that was such a pile of crap but everybody used it and i go i, I can make my site run 10 times faster hand coding and i can build it faster Less debugging, you name it. 
that's the way to do it. I mean, I know uh, Melissa had also dropped in from, uh, she is, yeah, she would be on this list, I think, as well. No, she didn't miss, she didn't mention which builder she was using. Um, ah, we got another question coming in in just a second, too. Um, she was coming from the Studio Press world, which was, um, oh, Gemini. Is it Gemini or Genesis? Genesis theme. And uh, well, now Genesis has embraced the block editor, though, haven't they? Uh, from what I gather. But anyway, we have another question here from the uh, from the chat. Uh, Loretta Schaff asks, what about WP Bakery as a builder? I'll be honest with you, Loretta, no. <laughs> I uh, yeah, WP Bakery is so badly coded that uh, more it has more conflicts with more plugins and more long lat more established plugins than any um, builder out there that I've ever seen. And uh, I don't suggest it ever. Uh, if you're if you have to use a builder that isn't the block editor. I'd say go you with one of these folks here on the screen, but I honestly, I always challenge everyone to try building what you're trying to build in Elementor or Divi or Oxygen or Bricks or Cadence or any of these other ones. I would say try to build it in the block editor and see if you can, because if you, you would can, be surprised with the block editor and like a little bit of custom CSS, you can get fairly far, fairly easy. Yeah. And a lot of times, too, a lot of the bells and whistles like Divi ads, the animations, the pulsing screens, the uh, what is it? all of the things that the bells and whistles that Divi ads to me are actually not accessible. They're not there. It's a completely bad world to go into because you've got folks out there that have motion sickness problems and uh you know hovering over something and having the the screen pulse at you or you know all of these screens where you're rolling down the screen and everything keeps animating on the way up is really just messy um to me but that's just i'm old school i believe in content first so um but these are the ones that came up with uh this was let me see amy wang had suggested elementor she was from our uh, RSVP in uh, Patrick Bianconi uh, brought in the bricks and he listed these other ones and I was going oh those are all basically the same thing <laughs> they're all also part of the framework very, of bricks. very yeah. important right. if you are using bricks make sure you are up to date a very important security uh, vulnerability was posted last week that you need to make sure you're up to date on that yeah, the, the automatic CSS is the company that makes bricks, but that is actually their CSS framework. Frames and advanced themer are like two other pieces of the bricks uh, framework that allow you to build out uh, specific things in your screen. Uh, yeah, WP Bakery is easier than Elementor, but at the same time, um, I recommend Loretta not using WP Bakery. Uh, really, just don't. Uh, it's Visual Composer is what it used to be called, and then it was WP Bakery, and they're not, they're just not coding with WordPress standards, and you run into a lot of issues with that kind of stuff. Basically, if you're going to go with a builder, you're going to have to replace it at some point down the road, or you've got to go full hog into it and hope to God that WordPress continues to support all the hooks that those things hook in with, because at some point in time, uh, WordPress may say, okay, we're killing short codes. And then Divi's gone. You know, stuff like that. So anyway, so that also was prior uh, when you Go brought ahead. up that list from Evan, he was referring to the WP GraphQL. Ah, that can be found on gotcha. Dollar. We can talk. What does that do, by the way? Is it just a it's so you can use uh the like GraphQL? Like oh. style requests, schema, API gotcha. and stuff. Gotcha, I dropped gotcha, the link gotcha. for it in the private chat. Yeah, I saw it. I'll take a look at it later. We got a lot of stuff happening in private chat. Oh, user role editor redirection work. Yeah, most of those, uh, Kenneth, we'll be talking about those when we get down to utilities. So uh, we'll get there in just a bit. <laughs> I'm going to drop you back into the thing so you don't get 
obliterated by the chat box every time, okay? <laughs> Unless you want to pop in and give feedback on any of these too, so. No problem. Yeah, so the next one that came up in our little list was custom post types and fields, because a lot of folks need to do, um, you know, add more content types to WordPress. And uh, the two that were mentioned, well, the one that was mentioned the most and the other one that I mentioned, uh, ACF was mentioned by probably four different people, at least, and voted on by many. And then I added the PODS framework. Um, what did you folks used to use prior to ACF supporting custom post types, registrations, and taxonomy registrations, and stuff like that, and extending the user roles? Did you use like CPT UI or just do it by canned? For like meta boxes and stuff? Uh, no, for like uh, registering your custom posts and your taxonomies oh, and stuff just... like that using the functions for okay that's what i thought so you went completely code or you did yeah, cpt always. ui yeah, yeah i, I just did it by hand yeah okay yeah see i use the pods framework because it does all of that and it does it well and it's always had it in there and it has relationships built in and you don't have to pay extra like you do with acf to get those so that's i was my always a fan of just using the functions directly because i know that the clients will never be able to touch it I get that. Uh, and you can turn that off. You can completely lock that down in pods as well, very easily. So not a problem. Uh, I'll be doing another talk on pods probably in June, uh, May or June, one of the two. So I'm revamping the entire uh, tutorial set for pods 3.0. So, okay, front end stuff. This was the one that Melissa uh, had shown, came up with, and let me show her now. Yeah, Melissa Goldberg added these from our Facebook group. And uh, these were all uh, front end specific uh, plugins. And uh, that was Soliloquy, which allows you to do slides, Easy Fancy Box, which is a light box plugin, uh, Uber Menu, which allows you to do those really huge, wide, enormous uh, screens on the menu screens. I guess I could have actually be, be linking to each of these while we're talking, but I just realized that there's a lot of plugins we're talking about here, and uh, maybe we can do a deep dive on them some other time. <laughs> and WP Tabs allows you to add like a tabbed interface on your front ends, that sort of thing. Uh, on the next one that came up was Forms, and no one mentioned a single other form other than Gravity Forms. But I threw Give WP in here as a free option for folks that need to do uh, donations because a lot of nonprofits do need to do donations and stuff like that. And I guess it doesn't actually give you the ability to do contact us type forms, but most of the things you want from a nonprofit is give me money, give me money, give me money. And it does that really well, so. We wouldn't dare mention any other form builders. <laughs> no, we wouldn't Jen? dare. Excuse me, Jen, there are no other form builders. <laughs> What other yeah. we should we should make it very yeah. clear that I work for Gravity Forms and their support, and Travis uh, works with a rather large uh, Gravity Forms certified developer, Cosmic Giant. So yeah, that's why we're so Gravity Forms specific. Uh, what was interesting to me was that no one mentioned any um, what you call it e-commerce plugins at all, and uh, Gravity Forms has Stripe, Square, PayPal. Authorized that Molly, a lot of these other ones. But <clears throat> GiveWP gives you PayPal and Stripe for free uh, in their free version. So that was kind of a, a reason why I put it on the list. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I also use Forminator. Yep. It's a very easy to use, lightweight form tool. I have never heard of that one. Oh, um, okay. I've heard of uh, Fluent it does forms. not exist. <laughs> All right, Jen. <laughs> Somebody's got a bad bike. Yeah, shit. Jen's got Probably. some issues with it. It's weird, but it was fine before uh it was fine before we went live. And then all of a sudden it's went live and started having an issue. So she was perfectly okay before. My mic has I think anxiety. That's it. Yeah. That's probably it. But yes, we don't talk about any other forms of plugins other than gravity forms because you know just the way it is. <laughs> Okay, um, the next one that came out of that one was email SMTP plugins because WordPress is notoriously bad about not sending email uh, properly. Um, I, would, I would recontextualize that as more so like your web host is not good at sending email than WordPress That's itself. That's probably 
Correct. Yes, that's actually a better way to put that because WordPress has a function called WP underscore email, which hands it off to PHP, which hands it off to the host to send the mail through their sending process. And the problem is, is that most host companies either, either you've got your email configured where you're sending it from a Gmail account, which immediately sends up spam flags because does that email account have an authorization to send it as this website domain? Uh, and all of those little things run into uh, kind of like connection problems. So that's where we recommend things like WP SMTP, easy WP SMTP, SMTP mailer, that sort of stuff. Uh, most of those have email logging. Uh, there's also a email logging plugin. I think that's actually just all it's called as email logging and or mail logging. And it collects the entire transcription and lets you see what's happening when your email is not working. One thing too that um, it's not a plugin, but it is a testing thing is um, there's a test emailer uh, website that allows you to basically send your emails to this site. It gives you like a link or an email address to put in and you send your email to that email address and it will do the entire analysis of the DMARC, SPF, DKIM, the whole bit and determine if your email is good or spammy or otherwise. So uh, it's a Which really little great. sidebar. If you have not set up DMARC, there's never been do a better so, time to do it. Do so now. <laughs> yes, do so now. Exactly. We should probably talk about that at some point in time. I'm going to note that down DMARC uh, mailer light to call it mail troubleshooting because we could probably have a whole ask us anything discussion about that, don't you think? <laughs> uh, one sentence. Go to dmarkdigest.com. Sign up for the trial. Follow the instructions. You'll be good to go. Oh, honestly, you're so kind. So, you, you might also check out Post SMTP if you haven't done it. I've pretty much tried every you know email plugin tool out there just to mm -hmm. find one that was compatible, worked well, and or was free. Uh, working with almost any type of Gmail, any type of, you know, Office 365 product, et cetera, et cetera. And I found that to be, for me, at least the best. And the, and the best to me is the easiest and works. And I don't get complaints. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I ended up using uh, one of the, what do you call it, the deliver, uh, mail gun or send mail, one of the or send grid, that kind of thing. One of those, one of those particular uh dedicated delivery services uh, has free email up to 10,000, I think. Sangrid. So it's one. Yes, yeah, Sangrid. That's the one. Thank you. I knew it was one of them. We push all three. So, uh, but Sangrid is the one that has the most, has the highest number of free emails. So I use that one. Okay. SEO. Uh, this came up, which was quite interesting. Um, Jen, you want to talk about Yoast and Rank Math and why you would use one over the other? Me, yeah. Sorry, what oh. do I want to talk about? So, uh, um, why one number? Think, why you still over right math? I think it's just personal preference. Um, rank math to me, the the interface is a little bit simpler. Um, Yoast is. I don't want to say more complex, but it's, it has um, uh, a few additional options, but then there's also, uh, you can get like, pro options um, and they do, um, I mean, they update that one, I think it's weekly. Um, so, you know, that one will always be updated. So I, I think it's just a, a personal preference. Gotcha. I know. I'm trying to move off of use because I feel like they um, they almost do it too much, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's much. what I, I think rank math is just a, it's a little more, yeah. just a little simpler to use. And Yoast tends to take over my entire back end, which I also don't like, so. Yeah, you'll get a um, lot of notifications. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Janet, uh, one of the coworkers from, uh, I already mentioned ACF analysis for Yoast, which allows you to apply the same Yoast analysis to your custom build without having to add code to do it. 
So that was uh, one of the reasons she suggested that one. And she pushed out uh, Fathom Analytics as an option instead of Google Analytics, as an alternative to Google Analytics, which is uh, GDPR, uh, which call it accessible. So uh, it works for, it, it follows the guidelines of GDPR, whereas Google Analytics does not. So there's also um, this new plugin that came out last week. It's called Conversion Bridge. It's conversionbridgewp.com. Oh. Um, Conversion and Bridge. it connects a bunch of different analytics uh, tools to a bunch of different like WordPress plugins. So like, hey, I can connect Google Analytics to Gravity Forms. I can connect Fathom Analytics to EDD, all that kind of stuff. Huh. Uh, it's not fully okay. featured yet because it just came out, but it has like 42 different integrations in it. Okay. Uh, I wrote it down. Uh, we can, I'll take a look at it. We'll talk about it and ask us anything next week or next month. So, sounds like a good one. Okay. In the protection realm, this was, I called it protection because I couldn't really, <laughs> I think it works that way. Uh, they were the anti spam by Clean Talk and Gravity Forms Cloud for Turnstall, which is a recapture replacement that gets you away from Google um, recapture. Uh, and those are the two that came up there. Um, these are the ones Elaine suggested, which was the anti spam limit login attempts reloaded, security scanner, and Word. I think WordFence was the one you were recommending, correct, Kenan? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, now, do you find that its API is a little bit, or its API, API blocking is a little bit too robust? Uh, actually, no. And I used Security uh, for for years, quite literally, when they first came out. They had some limitations that I didn't really like. They worked a little differently than WordFence. Um, when I got into WordFence and really dug around the insides, their documentation back in the day was a little lacking, so you had to do a fair amount of experimentation, which I like doing anyway, to try to figure out, well, what does this really do under the hood? Uh, but once I got into it, and then they started getting a little more polished, got more money coming in, uh, WordFence right now, honestly, is the top of the heap to me. I mean, if you sign up even for their free stuff, and most of my clients I have on free, uh, the only difference between the free and the hundred roughly $120 a year paid plan uh, is you get real-time updates for, for blocking malicious sites, malicious APIs, malicious anything, whereas with a free version, you wait 30 days. Now, in all honesty, if something's really bad, you get it in the free version. So their, their, their number one thing is try to protect their customers from the really bad people, more so than making a buck. But they do make a buck at the end of the day. But I find the tool very easy to use. How is their support for free for their free clients? Well, I, that's a great question. I had an attack on a site that was open to the world because the client sold worldwide probably two years ago now. And I said, hey, I got a problem. I sent them an email and say, I, need, I, I might need some help on this. I literally got a response back in, from a live person in under a minute. And they, okay. they turned on all their magic tools to block it and say, yep, we see it. Here's what it is. We blocked it. You know, uh, this is something that we just caught and it wasn't even in our paid plan yet, but we're going to give you, I think they gave me free paid for 60 days just to protect okay. me on that. So okay. I can't complain about the support. Okay, cool. Yeah, the biggest issue I ran into is um, their API blocker uh, tends to be a little bit, uh, aggressive when it comes to things like Zapier and stuff like that. And it was trying to find, I think uh, I couldn't find where to add the, or maybe I could find it, but the customer couldn't, uh, where to find out how to whitelist specific uh, things. Like, yeah. Yeah, they, they do have a lot of tabs. So it does take, you know, it does take working with oh. dedicating a day at least. Yeah, just That's what it was. I was actually days. able with WordPress. <laughs> I was able with WordFence, I think it was the one, I was able to see that it was blocking the Zapier and I was actually able to track it through that little piece of the interface. So, yep. yeah. Yep. They could they could use a better, a better search where you could perhaps describe your problem and it would, you know, take you to the tab where you'd have those settings. They were not quite there on right. the search at this point. But, you know, all in all for what they do as far as stopping really malicious stuff, I, I have no complaints. And I love security for a lot. A long time they had to really work hard to get me over but once i saw what they were doing that security couldn't i said yeah i'm in 
I know like uh, GoDaddy, HostGator, a handful of those, and then of course WP Engine and uh, Local by Flywheel have mm -hmm. bought all into the Cloudflare as their mm -hmm. protection scheme. So yeah. Which is well, I, and I do use Cloudflare on all my sites, you know, as well. Not just for the CDN DNS or, I'm sorry? Uh, just for the, the, for the DNS side or for the CDN stuff? Both. Okay. Both. I have uh, tried the turnstile, the Cloudflare turnstile. It's not Gravity okay. Forms, but oh, it's they, they, the just the Cloudflare yeah. turnstile. I've tried it on one site so far. I really like it. It was easy to set up. Yeah. You set it up with an API, and um, you know when you log in, you see this little nice little graphic that says, you know, Cloudflare Turnstile. So, <laughs> yep. I, but I, I haven't used it long enough to say whether whether it you know is really robust or what. But Clean Talk is the bomb, it, you know, for protecting uh, your domain email. Um, Comments, orders, bookings, uh, forums, subscriptions, registrations, you know. Does it all. It just, it just protects. And it, it costs a little bit. It's cheap, but mm -hmm. it's not free. Gotcha. Yeah, also use... worth adding to this list mm -hmm. is the WP2FA plugin, which lets you add okay. two-factor authentication. Okay. Uh, WP2FA. Yeah. Gotcha. Which you can even customize it of just like I have it set up so only administrators and people who can access sensitive information have to do two factor, but like customers don't have to. Okay, nice. Oh, good to know. I like that. Yeah, the limit logins attempts reloaded. Uh, Elaine, remember that one we talked about last week, the admin and site enhancements? It includes that, I think. Um, I thought it did. Maybe I'm mistaken. I might be mistaken on that one. Okay. I'll look and check and see. But it, because um, I know the limit login, the Tim's, that's a big one for a lot of people. And uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's only one plugin for one specific thing. There are a couple of it that might be able to handle that if you don't have to do the reloaded one. So, but I've got it on the list. So the next one we came into was our miscellaneous category, which means that we had like one plugin for one each type of thing. And uh, accessibility was a big one because it's uh, accessibility checkers. And uh, Lane, do you want to talk about that? Yes, we were using um, Word WP Accessibility Tools. And I forget what the rest of the name is. It's a long name. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a really it's long section name. Section 508 in the whole bit, yeah. Yeah. But it, it's it's in your dashboard and it lists all the images in your media library and you can just go through and add an alt text to all of your images in an easy way and also add a description because usually whatever alt text I put in, I copy it and it goes in, into the description. And it also... Um, does a contrast ratio checker. So oh, if your colors awesome. are not um, the right ratio, like think black and white. Now, black type on white, you're going to be able to see it. But if yeah. you have blue and green on top of blue, you know, some people are yeah. colorblind, especially men. So they're not going to be able to see it. So it has this little free little ratio checker. Um, it has an automated audit for A11Y auditing functions, and also lists a bunch of links for resources. So you could learn some more. But it's a great little plugin, free. I didn't realize it did the contrast checking. That's pretty good. Yeah, Let me check cool. it out again. Yeah. So catching came up. Uh, this was from Andrea at work again. Uh, she uses WP Rocket, and a lot of folks do. Um, I tend to use whatever the um, caching is available by my hosting company because most of them do but i also turn most of it off on forms and stuff like that so that we don't get impacted by that uh she also brought up the search which was search regex which is a a search replacement tool for wordpress it's a pretty good one um relevancy was what i used to use in the old day and uh 
when it was free. Um, but the search for index is a good replacement replacement tool there. It's uh, not free, had, right? Is it free? Search regex is, yes. Oh. Yeah. Search regex is a free WordPress plugin. Uh, relevancy is free. Search WP is not, and there's a handful of other ones that are not. So yeah. Is search yeah. regex hard to set up? Uh no, actually very simple to set up. So yeah. Pretty straightforward. But then yeah. you do have to I'm do gonna... regular expressions, so it uh... <laughs> it can get it can get tricky. <laughs> Okay. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Maybe it helps you write those little regular expressions. You never know. Uh, for writing regular expressions, regex101.com is a great resource because you can, it gives you like a little cheat sheet on the right side of like the different like parameters for building a regex uh, regular expression. And it allows oh, you, you know to put what? in. I'm being an idiot. Search regex does not replace your search. It does a powerful set of search and replace functions to WordPress post pages, custom post types, and any other data sources. So it's a search and replace tool for your website, which is good when you're migrating sites. My bad. <laughs> so I was completely wrong on that one. That falls okay. into the utility category. I will fix that in our notes. So I should have looked that one up first. Um, user roles and membership. Uh, I use members plugin by Justin Tatlock because I just trust him. And I love the interface of the members plugin. Uh, the professional version is called members press and it adds membership capabilities. I think, uh, Ken, you said you also use uh, also user, user role editor. editor. Yeah. Uh, I have right. seen a couple. Yeah, I've seen a couple. I like, I like members. I just like it. I like it because it categorizes the plugins uh, very cleanly and very easily. Um, uh, Ken McYoung has a better search and replace. He also added for search. I'll pop that one in there instead of search regex and move search regex over to utility. Um, I'm lo listening. I'm looking at all these ones you've been adding, Kenneth. <laughs> over in our chat. So You asked what I regularly use. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I use admin columns as well. So it's a it's an it's an interface to add additional functionality to the back end tables, the list tables in WordPress. Right. It, it so is a I, it is a performance improvement tool that's well worth the money. I so think so. If you if you want to, you know, for example, if you want to find where you haven't, you know, included some information about a picture. You can just add in the various columns you need. Maybe you even forgot to put the picture in. And then you can just scroll through your hundreds of pictures in 30 seconds and spot where you're missing information and then just edit it in place. You don't have to open up the picture. You just edit it in place and boom, you're done. So does it adds all that to the media library um, screen? I haven't played with it yeah. in the media library. Yeah, you can, you can add everything. I, I haven't found anything okay. you can't add yet. <laughs> okay, cool. And then we have our utility plugins, and this came into a lot of lists. Uh, health check and troubleshooting kind of builds on top of the site health tool from WordPress. Uh, it's written by some people that work with that. I don't know how it's been, if they're continuing to update it, but the troubleshooting piece of it, I, I like a lot because it's good for conflict checking. Um, it's around a uh, query monitor. I know what it does. I don't always know exactly how to use it best, but it allows you to, you want to talk about that one, Travis? Yeah, so it allows you to do so many things you can see. I'm going to pull up Query Monitor. I'm not going to pull it up to show you, but I'm going to pull it up on my own site that I'm looking at okay. right now to reference it. Uh, it gives you an overview. It shows you like page generation time, how much like memory is used on that page load. It shows you like all the different database queries, including where they came from, how many of them are duplicates, how long they all took. Um, scripts that are in queued on the on the page, styles that are in queued on the page, hooks and actions that ran, all kinds of there were any HTTP calls that were done on that page request. You can see a full list of them, including like which ones aired out and why. Same thing if there's like PHP error warnings, notices, well, not fatal errors, but notices or warnings on the page, it'll show you exactly which ones those are. Even if like an Ajax request happens and there's an error in that, it will automatically update and show you in the query monitor uh, oh, tool. Nice. Yeah. I did not very, know that. Very, very helpful. Yeah. yeah, I used to use it primarily to troubleshoot queries. That's what I used to use it for, so yeah. 
Uh, WP Cron Troll was one you also added, which allows you to basically troubleshoot the cron jobs, right? Yes, you can see exactly which ones um, are scheduled to run on your site. You can uh, change the scheduling of them. You can change the schedules of like, and, and with the WordPress scheduler, there's like specific uh, schedules you can set like daily, hourly, like that kind of like presets. So you can mm -hmm. schedule custom presets. You can run any of those scheduled jobs to run immediately. And okay. it'll even show you of like, hey, like you can tell if the WordPress cron is not firing properly because if a there if a scheduled task scheduled task is in there and the current time is past the time that job was supposed to run, it'll be highlighted and you can you can see what's going on there. Does it do any background task troubleshooting? Like the CRC URL errors and stuff like that? It does not know. Okay. That I'm aware I, was just, I was curious about that. I didn't know. I'd like to add WP Optimize into the list. If you haven't used it, you really need to give it a try. I use it predominantly for keeping my database nice and clean. We all install plugins to try things out. Then we uninstall plugins. And then sadly, a plugin is not always very good about uninstalling the crap it put on your machine. So you can fire up WP Optimize, and in a split second, you can see all these little pieces of junk left behind. Click one button, boom, it's, it's cleaned up. It's got a backup interface, so you can back up before you do a cleaned up in case you know something bad happens, and then just quickly restore. So I love it. Cool. Thank you. I will add that to the list. Uh, Transients Manager was another one you added, uh, Travis. I'm going to let you talk about that one because I have yes. no idea what Transients yes. are. So transients are temporarily stored data. So you can have, you can store uh, data against like an, a transient key. And you, when you register that, you set the expiration date. So it basically allows you to cache data. So like it programmatically, it's like, Hey, I'm going to like store like this gravity forms, like API license data call for like 12 hours. And if that transient call returns false, I know I need to refresh the data. So the transient manager allows you to see all the transients that are stored in the site and also allows you to delete those, which is great of like, hey, my WordPress plugin auto background update data is out of date. I need to refresh that. So you can just go in there and delete the update plugins, transient data to get fresh update data. Sweet. Yeah. Very cool. Now, redirection was listed. That's really great if you're migrating a site or moving pages around or changing the structure of a site and stuff like that allows you to create a, you know, this page points here. All of these pages that used to point here point underneath this. It also allows you to catch any places where um, you've got like, uh, what's the word? Four fours. Tracking, tracking and logging four of fours. And I can't think of anything else you use it for. That's pretty much the big three, aren't they? Like when you're making content structures and stuff like yeah. that, right, Jim? Oh man, you're why is your mic being so cruel to you? I don't know. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> it's so mean. Can now can you hear it? Or do you know if it's doing it? No. You just know it's doing it when we go. <laughs> okay. Got it. Redirection is great too. I, I didn't catch if you mentioned this because they'll automatically track 404s that are happening on your site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mentioned yep. that. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I love that. Yeah, and the three I don't know if you have a separate backup page or not, but I'll throw in there Updraft Plus if you don't. Uh, we actually did not mention. No one mentioned a backup plugin, which was very interesting. Wow. Can migrate with the one mainly because I think uh, most hosts now have their own, and uh, I trust my host backup better than anybody else's. So. I well, I'm, a belt, I'm, I'm a belt and suspenders guy. My my host has backup, but I like doing my own as well. Yeah, I like it because I can go to fly. I mean, I honestly I want to manage where WordPress sites so on a flywheel, so I can go back up now, back to staging, copy to staging, do my work. You know, the whole bit. Yeah, that's kind of my my thing. I prefer that methodology. I don't like having to do. I used to use Backup Buddy. And it just became such a pain in the ass. Oops, sorry. Pain in the A. To, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. We're not going to get demonetized. We aren't even monetized now. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, if, that, if that's for certain, let's, you know, let's, let's open up here. Okay, there, you, there you go. Say all the customers you want to say. Now, backup wait, wait, buddy, wait, wait, uh, wait. I used to use, but I was getting, basically got to the point once the site got too large, it couldn't handle it. It would just keep timing out. 
So, uh, those I've those post level backups are going to be way better anyway because they're running at yeah. the, the server level, so it's not impacting your site right. resources. And if you feel exactly. like you can't trust your site, your host's backups, uh, you shouldn't be using that host. Go to a different host, exactly. Uh, Travis, Travis is a purist, so take... no, it's true. He's, he's right. I uh, know he speaks can... the truth, but not everyone yeah. can afford the high. Quality. Oh, I, I'm not even talking flywheel. about. Yeah, yeah. I'm on flywheel, WP flywheel. engine. It's like fifteen dollars a month. Uh, Pantheon, fifty a year. Yeah, I mean, in most cases, it's not that much more expensive than what you would be paying you know, for the crap on GoDaddy and HostGator and all the other ones. So, even services Cyclone. like spin up WP, which lets you like bring your own server, and then they like do the management of the WordPress sites. Offers automated backups in it for not yeah. that much money. Okay, I think they all should. That's the one primary thing that the maintenance, the host that should be able to do automatically. It's their thing. Uh, code snippets is a great plugin for uh, adding, like little PHP pieces of code instead of having to add it to the theme and the functions.php. This plugin allows you to uh, basically pop them into little pieces and you can import them, export them, and not have them theme dependent. Uh, some folks don't like it because it's writing that code to the database, but honestly. I'm perfectly okay with it. Uh, Yoast duplicate posts allows you to duplicate posts, pretty much what it says. Really simple SSL makes your SSL configuration a lot simpler to do. Uh, most of your hosts nowadays have uh, bring you know have have the um, the automatic certificates, so this makes sure that your SSL is configured properly right off the bat. Let's encrypt, let's encrypt. Yeah. yeah, that's the word I was working for. Thank you, the let's encrypt uh, certificates, yeah. Uh, WP Activity Log is a really powerful plugin. It allows you to track all the crap that's going on on your site from your users, uh, what they're doing, what they're editing, what they're changing. So if you have uh, clients that you can't trust, uh, WP Activity Log will integrate and give you all that information. Or is it an alternative? Or if you have a remote what? employee who claims they're doing certain things, you can pretty well see they're not. <laughs> there you, you go. How That's I know. A, okay. yeah. What was the one you were mentioning, Travis? Is an alternate? stream. Oh yeah, I've I've used stream before. Yeah. I just like WP Activity Log used to have all of these separate little add-ons, and they're now completely integrated back in the whole plugin now at this point. They're really good. They work with all the form plugins. They're just, they're, they're very extensive. Uh, Manage WP was the one uh, Kenneth had talked about too. It allows you to do basically remote management of your WordPress sites, correct? Yep. All, yep. Yeah, like a sing singular dashboard. The, the worker is installed on the client site and then you basically go to Manage WP and do the, the work. So. Right. I, love I put it. WP rollback on here just as an option, but I think I'm going to probably drop it. Uh, it's weird because there's WP rollback and there's WP core rollback, which is the one, you know how WordPress gives you that list of plugins that are always on the front page that you can install. WP rollback it used to be listed there with their strange little character uh, graphic image icon. And uh, now it's WP core rollback only. And I was going, that's odd. So, yeah. Because <laughs> it used to work really well for like rolling back automated updates and stuff like that. But anyway, that was our, I believe we are finally at the last uh, yeah, That was pretty impressive. And we did all that in under an hour. Go figure. Now, granted, we didn't show off all of these different plugins, which is probably why if I had actually opened every single one and shared the screen, this would have taken forever, I think. But well, with what time it is and how many we had on the list, we did one plug in a minute. Yeah, not bad. And I think we gave, we gave them coverage to yeah. some extent. <laughs> you know. uh, I was I a little do, surprised. Uh, no, one, no one mentioned uh, any of the tools they use to debug crashes in some way. Uh, health check and troubleshooting is a good one for uh, finding out what is the thing causing your blue screen of death or your white screen of death, uh, because you can go into troubleshooting mode. And granted, that's only going to be on the front end. Right. Um, uh, I still do it the old way. I drop everything into another. I basically take all the plugins, drop them into another director, and then just, you know, one at a time. 
because sometimes it's too hard to find out otherwise what's causing mm -hmm. it. So yeah, query monitor is a big one for like um, Travis said for catching the plugins that are that are crashing too. Um, or just the old fashioned <laughs> way of debug dot log. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's so, that's yeah. what I do. <laughs> yeah, but it's slow. I've always the, been looking for a tool that when the system crashes, as soon as you bring it back to life, you get this little email that says, you know, these were the last 50 things that were running when the system crashed. Yep. Hey, Audrey, uh, Audrey asks uh, from our uh, from our chat, uh, she asks, are these slides going to be made available for future reference? And uh, yes, they are. Actually, two things. The YouTube video is going to have all of these plugins listed by category and linked out to all of their different little things. And uh, I'm also going to be adding that to a post on our website, and that will include the link to the slides. You know? So, yeah, definitely will be, and probably by next week if possible. So, our by doing the live stream the way we do it, it automatically records. So, all I really have to do is edit the description, and I can add all of these uh, links in there as well. No problem, Audrey, anytime. Okay, so uh, that is us for today. Uh, that is the end of our discussion. We will be back again next month uh, on the March 19th for our Ask Us Anything uh, crowdsourcing WordPress support workshop. Uh, please make sure that you visit our website, wptampabay.org. Um, we have all of our prior uh, live streams are all linked in there back to 2020 and all of our, basically all of our videos, everything, anything we've ever recorded and put on YouTube, all of our prior talks, everything is there. Uh, it also has links to our Slack chat and our Facebook group as well. Um, oh, he dropped away. I was going to say thank you so much, uh, Ken, for joining the call. It's always nice to have it. Wayne, I noticed you don't have any devices connected, but hopefully you're listening. So that's all that matters. Uh, nice to see you down there. <laughs> and, uh, and please make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we need to get monetized at some point so we can pay for all this stuff. And uh, that's how we do it, by you liking and subscribing to us on YouTube and telling the, the algorithm of YouTube that you love us and you watch us in our entire show. One thing I can say from looking at our stats, uh, most people do watch our entire show. So that's actually kind of cool. All right, folks. So we will, uh, again, let me thank my fellow organizers. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Elaine, for coming. And uh, and Jennifer, even with your uh, social anxiety, Mike, you know, thank you anyway. For <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's get us back into a full group picture. There we go. There's our big old gigantic faces. Everybody's saying hi. Or Travis being over overlaid by the overlay. Uh, but anyway, we will see you folks uh, next month, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you for watching a recorded session from WordPress Tampa Bay Meetup. We meet monthly through Meetup on live stream on the third Tuesday of the month through our YouTube channel and Facebook group. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, and be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new videos. Find out more about WordPress Tampa Bay at our website at wptampabay.org. Thanks.